the scripture is Isaiah 41 through 11. Um, this part of Isaiah is about comfort and it's kind of the, this Christmas message. Isaiah is kind of two stories. The first part of Isaiah is about judgment and the impending doom of the Assyrians. And then this part, I mean, from 39 on, it's about um, hope. That's why they use it for the Christmas um, season. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low, and the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. There's a part of this that Martin Luther King used, and when I read it, all I can hear is Martin Luther King's voice saying it in the I have a dream speech. Mm -hmm. I have a dream that that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, and the rough places made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. And I know I'm not speaking at all like Martin Luther King Jr., but um, I know all of you can recall that in your own head, his famous speech. Um, and even his speech was kind of two, two speeches. The beginning of it was, um, here's the mess we're in. And then the end of his speech, this the part where he talks about this, the I have hope, I have a dream. That hope is the Christmas message. It's the communion message, which we'll share in our own houses together. But that message of comfort that God will be there for us and God is there for us. Um, for whatever reason, this scripture has made me think of a story of a friend of mine um, he's my age, but back in high school, he was really struggling with himself. Um, knew he was different, knew that he was um, not like his friends. And kind of, so I'm retelling his story. This is not my story. So it, I'm going to say things wrong, probably. Um, Michael was gay, and Michael was really struggling with this in early high school. Um, and one day he went to talk to his dad and didn't say, didn't spill the beans, didn't come out to his father. But his dad knew that he was gay. And his dad placed judgment on him and made him feel like he was wrong and that he was doomed for hell. And that crushed Michael. So crushed him. Um, you know, 
he pictured the worst thing and that's what he felt. Um, years later, um, after college, he finally was able to come out. Um, and when he went to his mom to tell his mom, she, he didn't even have to tell her. She knew and she said, there is nothing, there's nothing that you can do that will change my love for you. I know because I'm your mom. I know what you've been going through. Didn't make excuses for her husband, but wanted him to know that her love was unchanged and that she loved him no matter what. There's nothing that he could do that would change that love. That's kind of this scripture, and I know I'm reaching, but at the beginning, it's judgment and doom, and at the end, it's hope for a good future. When we go through troubles, when we go through things that seem so insurmountable, we can look to, and this sounds so trite to say this, we can look to the Christmas season to help us through this, but really that is the point of this, is that there is hope out there that no matter how awful things may be and how even shoved away by loved ones, there's still redemption. There's still someone there that loves us. So I guess as we go through, you know, the communion is just like this too. It is a, a rebirth, a renewal, a, 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 a reach for hope. So when you participate in your communion this morning, um, think about that hope that this season brings and that hope might be for someone that you don't know that you know of who is needing something um it might be someone that you do know a family member that needs someone to reach out to them and you know one of the things when when i would serve communion at church i always was so aware of the intimacy that each person that I passed a piece of bread to, or, or the, the, excuse me, the wine, that that intimate relationship, that promise and covenant that was going on between that person and the Lord. Um, so be aware of the intimate relationship that you have with God, that you have with your family and with your loved ones. Be, be very aware of the presence of the Lord. That's my message.